Hello and welcome to Gunnar Weisskamp's Web Development. Uh, today, Lesson 13, MVC and Action Filters. Uh, today, we look at MVC Action Filters and how they can be used to create pretty URLs uh, and a, a couple of other little minor um, issues as well. <coughs> so, if you want to create today's uh, solution, I'm using Visual Studio 2013. Just going to File, New, Project, and then here in B, make sure you've got this selected with the web, and make sure an empty MVC is selected. So do A, B, and C there. Okay, so let's go into Visual Studio. <coughs> uh, first, so here we've got our empty MVC app, uh, completely empty, no controllers, no views in it, and no models in it. Um, so Let's first create a controller. <clears throat> right, there we go, empty controller. Just briefly, well, <laughs> you might always see this come up. You see this controller is not highlighted. Um, and I'll just mention briefly, that's if you don't know much about controllers, maybe I should do a whole tutorial just on controllers. Um, that's to do for routing a little bit in MVC. It's an important facet. Um, so normally when you name your controllers, <coughs> uh, always name them X controllers. Uh, it does help when maintaining and looking at code and it helps in the routing aspect. So you, so you notice here in the controllers, we're always naming our controllers in their controllers. But I think I actually will try and do a uh, tutorial just around that whole concept. Okay, so we've got our controller here now, and we put in our code here. Um, before we have a chat, let's add a view, have a chat about the controller. So that was index add view there. We're not got no models in this solution. Pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, let's just index empty without model, and just press add. So today's concept is pretty, it should be pretty straightforward and easy to demonstrate, but it might be of some use to people uh, at certain times. While that's doing that magic, why don't we grab our code already, which is pretty simple stuff as well. Probably the same code even, but just keep things in sync. So this is obviously our view page before that we've seen uh, before. So because we haven't got that many screens uh, open today, why don't we split screen this? Okay, cool. There we go. So here on our right is um, is our control stuff. Uh, okay, so. Uh, well, I've got that. I don't know why that namespace is that funny value, but anyway, <coughs> um, can we get rid of that namespace? Probably not going to like that. Let's just build that. Uh, while that's building, so what are action filters? Uh, action filters come in a number of different uh, processes. Here today we're just going to explain the action name filter and the non-action filter. So these are the two attributes we're going to explain today. Um, as talked about, this action here is going to show this view here. Um, now, what this action name filter does, it allows us to create our own pretty URL. So normally this page would be index, it would be home slash index. But, um, oh, it did succeed, good. But because we've got this action name here, instead of home.index, 
typing that in, we can type in home slash my home page. So that's a great little little attribute to use if you want to create pretty URLs or URLs which are more um, in tune with the page and what it shows. <clears throat> um, but one thing you do need to do is because we've got this view here of index, um, you then have to pass in the view that index name. If you put in home page in there, it'll fail. So and if you don't put anything in there, it will also fail. So if you're not used to passing stuff into the view, you can see here the view's got a number of overloads. You can pass in the actual view that you're trying to, to aim at, which is index. If you had here different um, views like uh, my about page, you could put in my about page here, so forth and so forth. So again, in there you can see the index, the, the view functionality has a number of different um, processes that we can use. Right now we're using this one, string and the view name, so we're using the fourth of the eight overloads that we can use actually. Okay, so uh, let's build this and then I'll show you what the non-action and how this method two comes into play as well. <coughs> let's shrink this down a bit. Uh, the build might take a while. It uh, does sometimes. While that is building, we can talk about this non-action uh, attribute, this non-action, uh, yeah, attribute, action filter, and what it does. Um, so if you put this non-action attribute against a function here within your code in the controller, you cannot call this function here called method1 out in a URL. You can't do it. It will not happen. But if you have a function here within your controller, without this attribute, you can call this function still. And that can be extremely problematic. Obviously, from a security perspective, obviously nobody can really know what th these are called behind the scenes. So it's really hard to find that information out. But if you had in here a call which changed a certain uh, process in the database, uh, right now, technically, we can call that live here in our URL system because it does not have this non-action attribute against it. Um, obviously, this method might have just been meant to be used in certain parts of this controller overall um, area, but right now you can call this as a URL, and we will demonstrate this, but you cannot call this uh, as a URL because it's got this non-action. So any functions that you have in your controller that are not meant to be used in a URL capacity over here, you should try to add this non-action attribute above them. So that's what the non-action attribute does. <coughs> so we'll just, uh, yeah, just going to wait for the application to actually build. We should see the My Home page come up, I hope. Or we might actually have to type that in. It's slowly coming along.
Okay, so, whoops, whoa. So let's put in home slash my home page. There we go. See, so the index did not come up. It couldn't find that because the action name is actually my homepage, no longer index. Normally it would have found that, but because we have to, we have to type it now in. So if you were to use these URLs um, and hard code them anywhere, you'd have to use this homepage URL. Um, but yes, yeah, so we can see this information is displayed from here. My homepage is cool. Refresh that. So we're calling here in this code, and this code will bring up this index page here because it's passing that index view here, which will then render this text information here. There you go. So my home page is cool. So there we've seen that change physically happen. <clears throat> now, if we want to try to call this method one, and just show some string data to the screen. Method one. So let's just type that in, press go. We can see we'll get an error. It just will not allow that to do it. But if we now put in two, so this guy here, and it does not have this non-action attribute on it, let's see what happens. See, show data from method two. So this functionality here is fired. Um, because it does, the, does not have this attribute non-action. <coughs> so you can imagine if you had some sort of database code in here which did something scary. Um, if somebody knew of this URL, they could call it and bang, uh, you know, that could cause uh, a negative side effect. So any functions you have here in your controller which are not meant to be called in this sort of sense, try to or make sure to have this non-action attribute above them. Otherwise, bad things can happen. So yeah, that's all we're looking at today. Just explaining the non-action and the action name attribute and how they can help you in your application. Cool, so please uh, subscribe to my channel or if you want, uh, you can have a look at my website as well at gunawisecamp.com. Uh, thanks for your time. Bye.